All right, it's been raining here for like a week. Let's talk about gimbals. What would an astrophotographer do with a gimbal? And what's more, this camera isn't technically compatible with this gimbal. This is an RS3, it's not the pro version. It shouldn't fit this guy. Well, I'm gonna answer all these questions in this video, as well as kind of give a review of this thing. At work, I do a lot of these 360 degree panoramas. And we've always kind of wanted to have the ability to basically do these 360 degree panoramas with an actual camera, okay? Now there are these very elaborate fixtures you can buy which are actually kind of expensive that allow you to compensate for parallax and all that stuff to basically go ahead and take pictures of all the different sides that you need with a DSLR like this and then create a very high resolution one. Because let's face it, the little Roku cameras, the little tiny things that have the big lenses on both sides, they create crap images. They're just, they're terrible, okay? That's what this was originally purchased for. And originally, I purchased the RSC2, okay? And right when I purchased it, I mean, literally a week after I purchased it, DJI came out with the RS3. Only real big difference between it, besides the fact that it didn't fold in half, was that it had much stronger motors in it. And that's where we get into the astronomy stuff. So I have always wanted to do a 360 degree panorama of the night sky and all the surroundings. And I actually experimented a lot with this using the older RSC2 version at Cherry Springs. Now it's pretty simple. I mean, basically we're gonna connect the camera up to the USB port. And from that, DJI's software, you know, through your cell phone, can actually control your camera. Now with the RSC2, I was able to actually control every Olympus camera that I had. The E1X, the OM1, which we're videoing on right now, the E1 Mark III, and the E1 Mark II. I didn't have any issues whatsoever with compatibility. And it was actually the same for the RS3 at first. Then I think they did, Olympus did a couple firmware updates, and now for some reason, the E1X and the OM1 won't connect anymore. I don't know why. <laughs> But there's still a way to control them, and I'll get to it here in a minute. This is an E1 Mark III. There's still no issues with this guy. And I, I'm guessing they use the exact same protocols as the E1 Mark II. Because if you go to DJI Memories website, you'll see that they only list one camera from Olympus as compatible, and that's the E1 Mark II. But the E1 Mark III definitely works, okay, still. And the E1X and the e OM1, there's a workaround, but it just requires you buy this one cable now. So this guy here, okay, I'm gonna turn it on right now. But you go into the app and there is an option in here where you can do the panorama. And basically you need to program into it what sensor size you're using, the shutter speed you're using, and then how much overlap you want on each picture, and then how long the interval is between each image, okay? And from this, so I'm, I'm starting it here, and you actually see it's it's starting this routine. It's going to basically take all these pictures of everywhere that it's looking, okay? And from that, you'll be able to stitch it together and make a 360 degree panorama. It's really quite cool. And right now, I've got like a two second delay between each image. When doing these, the trick with this astrophotography, okay, is you gotta remember that the sky is moving on you. And so I think that Olympus cameras are really ideal for this because number one, they're small and they're easy to balance. You could easily get the parallax errors out of here by just kind of moving it around and maybe buying some off, some small rig balance, balancing weights to essentially get it to where it needs to be to eliminate parallax. And also because they're very lightweight, they, they can be moved quickly by the gimbal from spot to spot and take the images. You don't need a big gap in between. I found that with a heavier camera, when the camera moved, you had to give it more subtle time between each and every single image. If you're wondering, what's the, what's the magic ticket to getting an EM1X or the OM1 to work with this guy? And also there, there's this one thing about using the USB to control it. So the USB-C, the USB-C cable that's provided with the DJI gimbal, 
it only allows you to shoot in 1080 video. Okay. At my work, I need 4K. However, with Olympus cameras, and Rob Trek has a video out there about how you can program the shutter button to basically be your record button. And DJI Mori also sells a USB-C to two and a half millimeter audio jack, which is actually for Fuji. That's what it's labeled for. It's, it's labeled for Fuji cameras. This has the same pin layout as Olympus cameras do in their intervalometer port, which is right here in the side. There we go, okay. So with this cord, follow Rob's video on how to reprogram it so that the shutter button will start your recording. And then you hook this up to your DJI Mori gimbal and from that, you can use the record button here in the gimbal to start and stop your recordings. Now, the only downside to this is that you can't control things like shutter speed and aperture remotely through the app. If you're using the USB-C connection, then you can control those factors. And when you're doing a 360 degree panorama, like I was talking about earlier, that is certainly a handy thing to have is to be able to control shutter speed, aperture, and the gaps and intervals between each image. So the cool thing about this cord is that it will give you that 4K ability. Now, getting the EM1X on this guy. So it's funny because with the Ronin RSC 2, they give you, you know, let's take this off of here. They actually give you two different connectors for the bottom of the camera. One of them is shallower. With the RS3, they only give you the big, thick, tall one. And immediately when I was putting this together, I found that the EM1X was just a smidge too big to fit on here. However, small rig makes a plate that just directly attaches to the bottom of the camera. And if you buy this guy, it's only 23 bucks. It's completely compatible, of course. Then you can get this thing to fit on here. And by the way, this, the EM1X, everybody thinks this camera's huge, okay? I don't know where they get this idea, okay? This is the smallest built-in battery graphic camera that you can buy. And the fact that it fits on here is kind of testament to that. With the smaller grip, you can basically attach and balance an EM1X on the RS3. Pro version, will do the other big battery grip cameras out there and that's because it has an extra inch of arm length on all the axes that it has. But the RS3, just the standard kit, will fit the EM1X. Like I said, testament to how small and compact the EM1X is compared to the other big built-in battery grip cameras that are out there. You know, because having held those, I tell you, they're huge. and. On this side of the camera, there's this little knob, which allows you to push it forwards and backwards until you kind of like, oh, I think I accidentally turned it on. There we go. You want the, you want the gimbal to be off and these things to be free, free floating. I'll just move that guy a little bit forward and there we go, That's, that section's balanced. And then we tilt it this way and it's just a little bit, a touch past it. It's kind of top heavy because this is actually a pretty heavy lens. But that's actually okay. This gimbal, the motors in it are plenty strong enough. And then one last side to, to balance would be this side. Which for that, let's see here, we need to go to the right just a touch. There we go, so that's done. And I lied, well there's one more side. We've got to balance this guy. So once all that's done, we can come back here into the menu option and we can go ahead and recalibrate this and it will just kind of tune itself to basically kind of fine tune all of its different motions. This right here is the original sliding plate that comes with the RS3. And this is the small rig plate that I bought. It's almost essentially the exact same design. It just doesn't have a secondary axis right here 
with this removable plate. All this does is add more weight anyways. I'm not sure exactly why DJI Moi does it this way. I think it's because it maybe gives you more options to move the camera right and left, which isn't quite totally necessary. I know the RSC2 came with two of these plates. One of them was like a lower profile plate, which that one would have worked fine with this and the EM1X. I just had to go and buy this guy in order to get the EM1X just to have that little bit of extra clearance. Now, this guy from Small Rig, there are actually two threaded studs that come with it. One of them is a 3 8 inch stud. And I, I took it out, of course, because it just kind of gets in the way. However, this guy does drop out really easy. And I think what I'm going to do, ah, there it goes. <laughs> I'll pick it up in a minute. And there you go. There's some tips and tricks you won't find on any of the channels to get a DJI Ronin RS3 to work with your EM1X. And, and these exact same setups, of course, will work with the OM1 using the Fuji uh, shutter release cable basically to start and stop your recordings. I have on here, this is a small rig cage, which stays on this camera quite a bit actually. And it is the same profile as the included plate with RS3. Now, to get it on here though, <laughs> With the provided plate, there is actually a relief cut on both sides so that you can slip this in on either side. With the smaller cage though, it's only on one side and so you kind of have to come in from the right. And the problem with this is that obviously there is a portion of the gimbal right here that kind of interferes with that a little bit. What you're going to have to do is take this thing off of the gimbal and then slide on the camera, which is kind of a two-step process. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. However, if that gets annoying to you, what I found is that this little stud will actually come out with an Allen screw. Uh, it's actually got an Allen screw head right on it. So just unscrew that. There's three little parts in there. One of them is a spring, one of them is the button, and the other one is the actual stud. If you remove those, then you can slide the camera in from the opposite side. And I do occasionally do that. The only thing I would caution, of course, is that if you, when you loosen the tension lever here, it can slide right out. Okay, there's nothing there to stop it from doing that. So be warned about that. And then I'm gonna tighten this guy down really quick. So let's, let's go ahead and put it on here. As you can see, if you slide it on like so, yeah, there's no way to get it in there. So we basically just have to remove it, insert it from this side, tension that down, and then we can slide it onto the gimbal and then go through our balancing process. Now, to get it, of course, to work with the remote control trigger, I've got my USB 3 here, C connector, which is gonna go into the top port of the gimbal and then this guy here can wrap around and we can connect it to the inner velometer port on the side, which I'm going to have to slide it back a little ways to get in position. And then we can slide it back forward to about where it would balance, okay? And then, of course, you're gonna to have to go into the menus too and reprogram it so that you're not using the little red record button anymore, but rather the shutter button to start your recording and from that, we can hit the record button. And as you can see, it is now recording and doing all of that remotely. And the great thing about this is you get 4K now, which you can't do using the USB-C controls, which like I said earlier, is a limitation of the firmware and that's on Olympus, okay? Hopefully they will change this and maybe my video will then be outdated. Would that be great? All right, so since I started doing this video, uh, I did, I did actually go to the hardware store and I bought a 3 8 by 16 stud, basically. It's the shortest one that I can get at the hardware store. Put that in there to solve that problem. Another thing I did is I actually swapped out the quarter 20 that came with it with one that has a little flippy lever. These are very easy to buy. You can get them for like, oh man, like two bucks, I think, on eBay. I think I bought a pack of five of them for like $10. And then the 3 8 stud that this thing comes with from Small Ray, I actually flipped it around the other way. 
And then in, on my lathe, I machined this guy out from stainless steel. There's a piece of drop off that I had laying around. And that right there was all that I needed. Now, of course, Small Rig, they sell these things. And they sell, I think theirs though have quarter 20 inch screw threads in them. So you would have to swap around or get an extra quarter 20 inch uh, little stud right here. But yeah, that's really all you need to do in order to get this guy to like balance and be compatible. Like I said, even if you don't have this little counterweight here, the motors are plenty strong enough to handle it. And it's just a tad bit out of balance, just the tiniest bit, but it totally works. And actually when the status display comes up, it doesn't even show it in the in the yellow at all. It, it's completely within the green, even that little bit of off balance. But adding this little weight here basically allows me to put some of my heavier lenses on here, like especially the 714. Now, should you buy this guy here? This is 22 bucks, I think. You know, it's a little expensive for a USB-C to two and a half millimeter jack, but I think it's definitely worth it, okay? You don't really wanna be reaching up here and pressing record stop, to stop and start your recordings. Pressing it from the button down here is much more convenient and it really is worth having this cord. Now, what do I think of the RS3, okay? So obviously, I think that the whole auto locking system is really quite cool. As you can see, it turns on and it starts wanting to do everything. And it, it's pretty nice and convenient. I mean, it really is nice to be walking around at a job and just be able to hit the power button and it locks everything up and stuff isn't swinging around all over the place. Because these gimbals, you know, the, the accelerometers in them, man, they can really panic quick and start trying to like really overwork themselves if you tilt this thing way off because maybe you're putting it over your shoulder to walk somewhere, all right? Now, the interface of the RS3, I think it's really easy to understand. The app that they have, that they've written for the phone, the way it controls and works with this thing is beautiful. I mean, I can be 60 feet away from this thing and it's still connected and it still controls the thing. It's really quite amazing. I wish that my ASI Air worked as well wirelessly as this thing does. But yeah, it's quick and it's responsive. It has plenty of little features to it. Joystick, it's kind of, I don't know. I'm just not used to it yet. I think I need to spend more time using it. I haven't heard anybody else complain about it. Now, one thing that they did do is they shortened the, the grip here a little bit. And I gotta say, it, it isn't quite as comfortable as the RSC2 was. The longer, the longer grip was nicer, okay? But that, that again, I, I spend a lot of time like this with a little tripod, basically as my second grip. Press and hold the power button. It locks it in for storage. Press and hold it again. Turns it back on. And this auto locking feature is such a convenience. It really is. Just tapping on the power button, of course, locks it. Because when you're in a job, you don't want this thing working the entire time you're walking around and so forth. It, that power button right there, that option just to quickly lock it, that saves the batteries big time. And okay, so battery life. Battery life on this guy is very good. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why I enjoy using a battery grip camera, which yeah, when I use the OM-1 on here, I use the battery grip as well. And that's because you really need two camera batteries in the camera itself and it will last as long as the gimbal does. Because when you're shooting 4K, especially if it's uncompressed, yeah, it kills the battery pretty quick. <laughs> as a matter of fact, while we were shooting this video, I had to switch batteries on the OM-1 because I didn't have the battery grip on the camera. And yeah, now the sun's up and my light's going bad. Well, while I was setting up for my last shot, my son threw dirt all over the camera. Good thing the camera's dustproof, but I don't know about the, the Ronin. We'll find out, I guess. The DJI, I'm sorry, in the video I've been calling it the DJI Mori quite a bit. There's a CNC company out there that makes machines. It, in my brain, it's kind of the same thing, although they're two totally different companies. So I apologize if earlier in the video I've been calling it DJI Mori. It's just DJI. The DJI Ronin RS3. Do I like it? Yes, I do. 
DJI, okay, it's from China, okay? China is a mixed bag. And apparently, the city that this one comes from, or that they have their manufacturing plant in, is one of the better ones. And if you don't know much about China, China is a completely communist country. However, within China, there's these tiny little zones. They're called duty-free zones. They're, they're in cities, and they're very small. But within these, they're literally little tiny capitalist countries, and, and they drive almost a third of China's economy, even though they're extremely small, and they, they only occupy like not even 2% of China's population. But anyways, the city that obviously DGI resides in, it's one of the better ones that turns out some very good quality products, as is evidenced by the impression that I have from this thing so far. The only complaint that I have about this guy is basically the quarter 20 stud at the bottom of the battery grip. And I kind of wish it was a 3 8 inch stud. It's just, it's basically the, the main source of any kind of wobble that I see in it while I'm doing my 360 panoramas. Now, obviously when I'm holding the thing by hand, it's not a big deal, but I see that there are aftermarket extension rods out there for these things. Man, I can't imagine sticking this thing on there. And even though my Olympus cameras are well under the weight limit of this gimbal, uh, it, that just seems like a recipe for disaster to me. However, I've never heard of somebody breaking one. So maybe I'm just making a mountain, a molehill out of a mountain, a mountain on a molehill, there we go. But yeah, let's sum this up. EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III, completely compatible with this so far and, and still, okay? EM1 X, and the OM1, they were in the beginning. I, I don't know, firmware or something has changed, so maybe Olympus will fix this and my video will be outdated. If you get the Fuji cable to basically connect this, then all four of those cameras are going to be workable with this and you can use the record button to start and stop your recordings. You can't control any other features in there, but that's kind of okay. It's really the most important one, is to be able to start and stop videos from the gimbal itself, not having to reach up to the camera and touch it because that just wastes time, and usually that's the most critical moment right there. You know, those of you who are going to want to use Olympus cameras with a battery grip and or the EM1X, then you're just going to have to get that small rig plate adopter, which I will link to in the bottom here in the video description. Uh, and if the link ever breaks, just let me know. I'll update it again. And then, of course, there's a couple other fine-tuned things about it. But, you know, really, overall, it seems like a working package that uh, is a good addition to my portfolio. And, yes, tonight is a clear night, so I'm going to go set up the telescope.